a 6.3 billion rand budget cut, the KwaZulu-Natal Education Department has little hope of filling vacant teacher posts. This is on top of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which has affected teaching and learning. So can adequate and safe learning even happen in the province? Let's find out. We can speak to the education MEC in KwaZulu-Natal, Kwasi Mshengu. MEC, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. So the 6.3 billion rand budget cut comes as a shock to you? Well, uh, indeed, uh, it was a shock uh, um, uh, to us, Shahan, because uh, we had always believed that um, if uh, education is uh, an apex priority of government, then um, as government departments uh, and authorities will do everything to protect our space, because any cut that is effected against the Department of Education will have a severe impact at the classroom level. And uh, where things happen, really, in terms of building the country, is at a schooling level because that's where we give learners competency, skills, and knowledge base that is necessary for the development of the country. So it was really a shock, I must say, that uh, we had to suffer such a massive budget cut. It's worrying to hear you say that it's going to have a severe impact at a classroom level. Tell us exactly what the impact is going to be. Well, Jan, um, the, the 6.3 billion cut, which uh, has been effected against the department, has meant that uh, there are teacher posts that uh, we cannot fill. As it stands, there are just over 2,000 uh, vacant posts, which are necessary for, for, necessary for, for quality teaching and learning in our schools, and we have not been able to fill those posts. But uh, we have also since been instructed by the Treasurer to say we need to reduce uh, the headcount uh, with about 6,114 uh, staff complement in the department and of that 6,114, just over 2,000 again is, is educators. So it means that uh, in total, we need to cut about, uh, with about 4,000 educators, basically retrain 4,000 educators in the system. And uh, in our view, that is not sustainable because each and every uh, class deserves to have a, a teacher. Once you remove teachers in class, you are basically crippling the system because there will be no teaching and learning. And that's what has been the, the, the major impact of this budget cut, that uh, in some of the schools in Wazul Natal, uh, there are no teachers in class. So there are learners who go to school and, and, and are unable to be taught certain subjects because we cannot fill uh, the post since there is no money that uh, has been budgeted for, for, for such posts. But also in terms of infrastructure, uh, we have had a severe impact, uh, such as a, a, a program of building new schools, eradication of pit latrines, uh, those programs are now uh, moving in a slow pace because uh, we cannot spend what we do not have. And these, uh, as we are saying, that uh, these are um, negative impacts that are resulting from these budget cuts. That's absolutely worrying, isn't it? Especially since children have a constitutional right to education. So what are you going to do? Because, of course, you're the MEC. You have to find a way around this. We can't have pupils going to classes and there being no teachers. It's really worrying, Chan. Uh, we must concede to that. And uh, we have been raising this matter with a number of stakeholders, uh, including the, the Premier's office. Uh, we have raised it with the provincial treasury. Uh, it just in the last uh, provincial executive council meeting, we tabled a report formally about the implication of this. And uh, by law, Shahan, I'm supposed to, to make a, a, a proclamation at the end of September uh, in terms of the number of educators that uh, the, the sector will have in, in the 2022 uh, academic year. And I've said to the Provincial Executive Council, a decision must be made whether indeed we proceed with the retrenchment of these educators as per the letter from Treasury. And these are implications of retrenchment. And in our view, once you retrench um, over, above, over and above the, the pressure that we have, we are going to have a system that is collapsing in our hands in the province of Kwasul Natal. We are not going to have um, effective teaching and learning. In fact, we are not, we are not going to have teaching at all uh, because without a teacher in class, uh, there cannot be um, any teaching that is taking place. So the Provincial Executive Council uh, agreed that the Premier as well as the, the MEC for Finance, working together with our department, must approach uh, the National Treasury to seek for more funding uh, so that uh, at least we can uh, be able to mitigate uh, against the retrenchment of these, of these uh, educators, as it were, but also to be able to move um, at, a, at a faster pace 
with the infrastructure rollout, rollout that uh, we have been embarking on. So th those are the measures that, uh, we have take, that, we have, that we have taken, and we are hoping that uh, before the end of this month, at least there should be a positive uh, feedback uh, from, from, from National Treasury. Otherwise, uh, the situation is really dire, and um, we, we do want really to place it on record so that we are not seen as people who are telling lies that uh, um, there are schools really where we can see that there's no effective teaching uh, because of these budget cuts. And uh, we have made everyone to know that uh, our hands are tight uh, because um, we cannot continue to employ teachers when we can't pay them. Because if we fill these vacant posts without additional funding, it means that uh, we are not going to be able to pay the, the, these, uh, these educators. But similarly, we are objectively and uh, opposed uh, uh, to, to any form of retrenchment because education, in our view, should be a space that must be protected by all of us. I'm actually so... I, I can't believe it because you're in a position where you're asking Treasury or Treasury's asked you to do something that's going to ultimately jeopardize the education system in the province. Now, when you say there are many pupils who are going to go to class without teachers, how many are we talking? How many classrooms are we talking about here? How many learners are we talking about in terms of those being uh, affected by this? It, 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 it will vary from one school to another, uh, uh, Shahan, because... Um, uh, schools PPN differs in terms of enrollment. So there will be a school, for example, where there will be one educator short. There will be schools where there will be two or three more educators that are needed. Um, and uh, it means that if there are no educators uh, in terms of the number that is required, those subjects which are supposed to be taught by those educators uh, will not be taught. Uh, so it, it, it differs from one school to another. Uh, depending on, on, on the enrollment. As we speak, uh, Shahan, we, we, we can also indicate that um, our plan, for example, was that uh, by end of, um, of, of August, we should have completed curriculum for grade 12 in particular, so that we have enough time for revision in preparation for, for, for final examination, examinations. As, as I speak today, there are schools that have not uh, completed the curriculum because uh, the teachers that we ended up um, putting in those schools came at a very late stage and they are, they are, they are a bit behind in terms of, of, of the curriculum. We are hoping also that uh, the, the work that uh, we are putting in place in terms of uh, extra classes and the uh, Saturday classes will enable us to, to cover the curriculum such that by end of September, all schools, at least in terms of metric, uh, they have covered uh, the curriculum. Then we have the, the month of October for revision and uh, necessary interventions in preparation for final examinations. Just in terms of the teacher cuts that you have to make, 2,000 I see here, and then obviously you have 2,000 vacant posts, which makes it a total of 4,000 vacant posts eventually. When is this retrenchment process supposed to happen for the 2,000 uh, educators? Well, I'm supposed to be making a pronouncement at the end of this, uh, of this month as to how many, how many educators are we going to have in the system uh, in the 2022 academic year. So it means that uh, whatever uh, decision that uh, the cabinet uh, finally arrives at, um, if, if, for example, they say uh, we can't give you anything, uh, the National Treasury say we can't give you anything, it means then we must make a pronouncement that um, at, the end of, at, at the end of this year there will be teachers that will be retrenched, such that uh, we are going to start with a, a far lesser number of educators uh, come 2022 uh, academic year. And uh, that, that's, that's what is worrying us because um, each and every day of teaching and learning is important. Um, so we don't want to lose many days because um, there are teachers that are not in class. So basically, in terms of answering your questions direct, it means that uh, by end of this year, I'm at, of this month, I must make a pronouncement whether we continue with the changement or at least uh, the situation is being saved. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to get uh, unions who are not going to take this lying down. They'll obviously challenge this. But uh, have you managed to try at all to renegotiate with Treasury, given the implications this budget cut has on your province? And also the fact that, you know, you are aware about the budget cuts uh, for the financial year. You know, is there no room, wiggle room, given the implications at all? Well, we're in constant uh, consultation uh, and contact with the provincial treasury um, to say how can we, we save the situation. Um, but up until today, uh, Shahan, there's not been any positive um, a move in terms of uh, saving uh, or averting 
uh, the, 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 the dire situation that uh, we, we are facing. That is why we have had to put the matter formally to the Provincial Executive Council and request the Premier to lead a delegation to negotiate with the National Treasury to, to, to give us more funding. Uh, in fact, what, what also shocked us, Sahan, was the fact that uh, we have even been told that in the next financial year, uh, we are going to lose $9 billion, uh, as a Department of Education in Wasul Natal. And in a year that follows that, it will be $11.3 billion. So it means over the MTF, um, we are likely really to, to fall into a cliff as a Department of Education in Wasul Natal if something drastic is not done uh, to avert uh, that particular situation. Currently, the projections are not looking good, but uh, we are working, as I'm saying, uh, 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 with, the, with the Department of uh, Finance in the province constantly. Uh, the way have involved the office of the Premier. I think now really uh, the only situation, I mean, the only way that uh, we can proceed is when the National Treasury gives more funding to the Department of Education in Wasulata. Yeah, it's sad it's uh, resorted to this, isn't it? Because ultimately you're going to see parents unhappy, you're going to see legal action against the provincial and national education departments because people will not be happy if their children are going to classrooms without teachers. Um, I do hope you sort it out. I will put in a request to speak to National Treasury as well as the National Education Department on this matter. Appreciate your time. Kwazulu Education MEC Kwazi Mshengu.